Welcome, I am Hafid and in this video I will be unboxing the Push Apart Helix project example from the Insidium content repository. If you are new to the channel, this is my breakdown series. This is my first time reaction to opening up this 3D motion graphic project examples slash templates and my goal is to understand how they were made so I can apply those principles and techniques to my professional artwork. This is not a tutorial nor a master course but me just wanting to learn more about X particles and if you want to see how the final animation looks just follow me on Instagram and you'll see the final result sold or just keep watching if you want to see more of the, of the process. So the software that I will be using today is Cinema 4D version S22, Cycles 4D, X Particles, and Octane Render. Sometimes I like to use Cycles, sometimes I like to use Octane, it just depends how I feel at the end. Okay, so less talking and more doing. Let's go. Okay, so this is how the project looks outside of the box. When I first open it, I have the simulation on the left, and I actually attach the picture viewer. If I click on window, picture viewer, and I open up the image file that comes with the project, they're telling us that this is how it's supposed to look right outside of the box. We're not gonna change anything, we're just gonna press render, and this is how it's supposed to look. So let's give that a try. I'm going to close picture viewer, and in my toolbar, I'm going to open the real time preview and just attach it to the side. They do not include the animation on their website, but I'm going to press play just to see how that is gonna look like. And you can already see that we have some camera movement. We have some particle growth along the helix spline. So let me pause it right there and like i said out of the box i haven't changed any settings i'm just going to start the render and there you go it is actually working outside of the box the lighting is a bit different on the example that they gave us but honestly on the project file itself the lighting looks way more cinematic and as always depth of field gives those animations a more realistic feeling because that is how our eyes adapt the focus in real life. We cannot just see everything clear. On the example that they gave us, the sphere material looks very synthetic and the lighting is in some points overexposed where you lose some of that detail in those spheres. And in the render, we can see that this looks very, very well lit. We're not losing any detail on the spheres. And to me, they look very realistic. So once again, this is our simulation on the left window. And on the right, we have our render preview. And at this point, I am ready to start deconstructing the scene. So let's get going. I'm going to close the real-time preview for now. I'll make this menu a bit bigger. I'll open the camera dolly and just get out of the camera. And over here I have my mouse so you can see what I click. And next to me I have the keys that I'm pressing just in case you're wondering what's going on when I move around. So I'm going to zoom out just so I can get a better view of what the whole scene is doing. So this package comes with two lights, camera, the Insidium logo, and then the Helix splines. Let me press play. And you can already see how the camera is moving, how those particles are growing and how this thing is just working from a different perspective. And for now, I'm gonna deactivate the lights. How I like to go about this is first deactivating the lighting and environment that comes with it, just so my scene is not as polluted. I will select my XP system, go down to the icon viewport and deselect it as well. Open up my camera dolly, and just hide it for now. I'm gonna minimize that. And I'm gonna open the XP system menu. Expand that window. And I'll minimize this for now. I can already tell that this animation is pretty simple because we're using emitters, a couple of utilities, and some modifiers. We're not really digging into questions, actions, or even generators. Not even dynamics. So this is going to be pretty, pretty easy to make. I'm always going to start with my emitters. So I'm gonna deactivate everything else that I'm not using. Open up the emitters. And it seems that I only have two. So let me start with one i'll select it zoom in and it's you can see it is this one right here and it is already in the shape of a sphere so if we go to object emitter shape it's actually a sphere now we go into the emission mode the emission is on rate the birth rate is at 350 particles it has no speed and those particles have a radius of two so let me play it and yes those particles have no speed 
but they're going along the helix spline. One thing I like about these project examples is that everything is pretty organized. Even the helix shape is not part of the XP system. They like to put them inside of the utilities. As you can see, the helix is right there. And they're, right now they're using the helix. So let me go back. I'll hide the helix that we're not using and play it again. And as you can see, those particles are not moving. What's moving is the emitter. The emitter is just going along of that spline. So if we go back, you see it right there. So what it's making this move is actually, we go to the emitter. It has a line to spline expression. If I click on it, it's using the helix path. And what is being animated is the position of that. So right now it's in 0% at the beginning of the spline. And if I move this, it's going to move the emitter at the position percentage. Move it all the way back. And that is what's being animated. So let me activate the second emitter because it's basically the same thing. I'll enable the helix. Go back. Zoom out so we can see the whole thing I press play so at the very core of this animation we have two helix splines and then we have emitters just being animated on the position on that spline so now let's move to the modifiers I'm gonna activate the modifiers and use and minimize those utilities for now I'll expand the menu and we have an XP push apart and an XP scale I'll deactivate the scale so we can learn more about the push apart I'll select it and since this is activated I'm going to press play and see if there's any changes and just like the name the XP push apart is taking those particles being emitted by that sphere emitter and just pushing them apart from their origin point I'll zoom in so we can see it a bit better and I'll just go to the object tag of that XP push apart enable is selected the mode is set to independent and the distance mode is set on the use particle radius if we go back to our emitters we can check in on their emission tag that their radius is two so i'm gonna try and just make that one same thing for the other one and possibly change that birth rate to 500 the same as the other one i encourage you to play around with the numbers and just make this composition our own this way you're gonna be more comfortable to just play around and find things that work for you so i'm gonna go back to the push apart to the object tag and the strength is actually on seven so i'm gonna try and just crank it up all the way to 100 go back press play and well not much is happening and because i decreased the particle radius i am assuming that we gotta change this mode to absolute and probably do that distance on let's say five i'll go back wow that's amazing i really like this look because they are breaking apart from its origin point but it also looks like they are dissolving in a way so i really like this So I'm going to keep that style and now I'm going to activate the XP scale, which I assume is just going to increase the scale of those particles. It's enabled, it's set on independent, the parameter to change is set to particle radius, but we have other options. For the operation, we have it to set to value and the radius value that's going to change those particles to is 11 centimeters. So let me go back and press play to see what the XP scale is doing. Whoa, okay, I'm confused where does the color come from we didn't have any color and the only thing that we activated was the xp scale i'm gonna check the groups affected the mapping and we have one map two maps but this is just for the radius i'll go to fall off and i don't know where the color comes from let me go to the emitter itself i'll go to the display okay the color is there next one okay color is there okay i see it so our particle display color as you can see it's set on circles that's why we particles are being represented by circles now the color mode is set to gradient and it's attached to a parameter so this is our gradient color this is how it's going to change from green to orange and now because of the color mode set to gradient parameter our parameter is set to radius this means that according to the radius of the particles the color is going to change based on the gradient so we set a minimum amount of zero which is this green point over here and a maximum of 20 which will be technically all the way over here so as the particles change from zero to 20 they will be changed in color and for now this is only going to change the color 
in here in the editor view and i can already tell you that i will be using cycles 4d because we're using the information of those particles to drive the color that is going to be rendering those particles at. at least i don't know how to use that particle info node with for example octane render so i will be sticking with cycles 4d on this composition but yes you can see how now i activated the xp scale and because those particles are growing bigger and because of this creating parameter they're changing color as they grow so now that we have the simulation ready i'm gonna go ahead and open up the camera dolly and see what that is about i'll make it visible on the viewport just so we can see it zoom out a bit more and if i click on the camera we're going to analyze how this camera is being animated so for now i'll just hide the xp system press play and you can already see how this camera is moving now the interesting thing is that if we go to the camera we go to the coordinates so if we go to the coordinates of the camera we can see that nothing is actually moving on the camera itself and that is because this camera is a child of a null a null is basically i want to call it an empty dot in space which can be used as a holdout kind of like a pin but as you can see it is just like a dot in space and this is what is actually being animated and the camera because it's a child of it is going to take onto its parents position and rotation once again the camera if we go to coordinates it is not moving what is moving if i go to the null you see it's moving its rotation but the position it's not moving that is because this null is it's a child of a camera dolly if i click on it you see this works just at one of those camera attachments where you put your camera and it just like moves it from one side to the other and this camera dolly as you can see in the icon is also a null so one null is driving the direction the other is driving the rotation and then that camera since it's the child of both of those is just following the null wherever it goes and that is very interesting to me i actually don't know much about camera animation so i feel like i'm this technique is pretty easy to learn i don't know why they have to use two separate nulls but this gives me a lot of insight on how i can actually create my own camera rigging and if we just go and activate the camera object tag go back you can see how the camera is moving and i just think that is really cool so let me go back and activate the xp system restart the timeline and that is how we started i'll go back zoom out a bit more and i'm going to activate the lighting i'll expand that so we can see what they have and they actually have a sky object with the material and two cycles for the soft box lights so let me go back to the camera start the timeline and just select the point i'll open up the real time preview And there you go, that is pretty much our animation. Our sample size is set to 25, but I will probably lower it to 15 to create that composition for social media, just so I can share it, you know? I don't want to take too much time rendering this scene since this is just me learning and experimenting. And I also like to add sound effects, so there's gonna be more work to do, so the less work, the better. And now that everything is activated, we can see that we get that same look as when we first open up the project. I did change some of the parameters like the particle radius, but it looks pretty much the same. But what I want to do now is actually deal with the materials. And if you can see right here with the cycles 4D tags that we have included in the project. So let's start with the emitters. So I'm going to start with the particles material. And right away, we can see this particle info node that I was telling you about. This is the only reason that I use Cycles 4D because I believe that it's just so powerful. We have all that information from the particles themselves that we can use. In this example, we're just going to use the color. And that color is going to drive the subsurface color of those particles. And they have some specular, some roughness, and they're just connected to this output node. And that is basically all of our material. This is just a regular material for the helix themselves. And our last included material is just about 
background. Let me open again the particle material so I can show you how I can change the color. If I click on the subsurface color, we don't really have an option to change it because it's using those particles to drive the color. So if I want to change the color, I actually will have to go to the emitter itself. I'll click on the first one just to show you. I'll minimize this. I'll just make the window a bit bigger. And if I go to the display, this is the color that it's going to look for. And this is what we can change just for our composition. Now, if I open up the gradient color menu, we can actually load a preset of colors that already come in Cinema 4D. I like the flame number six, so I'm going to select that one. And I think that you just have to restart the animation to see the changes. So I'll press play and there you go. You already changed the color of those particles. I'll press play on the render. And there you go. You can see how it's changing the color on the viewport and on the render itself and i want to emphasize that this is not always the case the only reason that they both look the same is because of that particle info node if i was to open octane render we actually have nothing to display even though we can see the particles on the left Octane does not see that particle info node and cannot create anything based on the particles. And we also have lightings from a different renderer and an environment from a different renderer, so it will not be able to see that. You can still use Octane Render to create a composition based on this simulation, but I'm not going to go through it on this video. So if you want to see how to render with possibly Octane Render and Redshift, I can show you a way for this render system to see those particles and you can add your own materials as well as your own lighting and whatever you need. So I'm liking this purple on the emitter. So let me try and match the other one and I'm just gonna do a pink. I have to restart it, let's play. And this actually looks like that nerds candy. So I'm liking it so far. Now the last thing that I want to do is see if I can add some kind of pattern into the spheres because they look pretty simple. So I'm using a vector displacement node. If you go to vector, vector displacement. And for the vector parameter, I attach a displacement map, which is going to create that extra geometry on the spheres themselves just so i can give them a little bit more detail oh wow now that i added the cycles for the environment and i activate this ambient occlusion it seems that the lighting is working a bit better on my favor so i'm just gonna keep it i really like how it's turning out and that is about 10 hours of rendering that's going to take to render this scene this is basically just going to be 10 seconds of animation and it's going to take me around 10 hours just to render this and just to compute all that information i think what is taking the most of the computing process is the subsurface scattering subsurface scattering looks really cool but it takes so much computing power just because the program has to simulate the light bouncing and scattering inside of that material again this is a real-time physical path tracing material so all of those light bounces are pretty much simulated like the physical world so yeah i mean this is going to be ready in about 10 hours if you want to see the final animation make sure to follow me on social media and just check out all of my other work and this was the unboxing of the push apart helix project file from the insidium x particles plugin for cinema 4d this is basically just a motion graphics template example that you can use to learn how to make these animations i mean you can use them as templates if you want to but it's best if you deconstruct the file and you learn how it works so you can either recreate it or you can apply those same principles and just learn how x particle works and use that knowledge for your future projects and if you're interested to see how i'm getting this effect on my webcam you can actually download this snap camera i'll leave the link down in the description but you can basically use snapchat filters on top of your webcams and yes you can use this in meetings you can stream with them and you can just try them all out there is a separate app called lens studio which is actually where you can make your own so if you're interested in them just go ahead give them a try use this to stream your favorite games to make your next videos next meetings just a little bit more interesting and as you can see they look pretty cool and pretty accurate they work just like a snapchat filter and i feel like you can come up with some pretty cool looking stuff the eyes are kind of weird but let me take off my glasses and there you go
you can see it a bit better and i'm thinking that i might do some dia de los muertos one just to see how it looks pretty cool right and that is everything for this video i hope that you're liking this series if not i'm still learning a lot from them so let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions at what project i should deconstruct next again these are from the insidium content repository if there's anyone in specific that you just want me to break down or if you want to try it out yourself that's fine i'm still going to be using these as a learning experience for me and if you just want to follow more of my work again just follow me on social media that is pretty much it thank you